Hello and welcome to another episode of today's GK. I am Pooja Devedi and in this segment we are going to discuss objective questions from the perspective of current affairs. Okay, so let's begin with the practice question of the last segment. Consider the following statements. National Thermal Power Corporation Limited is a central public sector undertaking under the Ministry of Power and NTPC Limited became a Maharatna company in 2010. Only a public sector undertaking in India with a Navratna status can become a Maharatna company. So we have to select the correct statement. Okay, so NTPC, yes, it is a central public sector undertaking which comes under the Ministry of Power. And also, only a public sector undertaking in India with a Navratna status can become a Maharatna. Okay, that's an upgradation. And NTPC Limited, it became a Maharatna in 2010. All these three statements are correct. So, the correct answer to this question is option D, 1, 2 and 3. Recently, NTPC Limited has commissioned the largest floating solar PV project of 25 megawatts on the reservoir of its Simhadri Thermal Power Station in Vishakapatnam, that is in Andhra Pradesh. So, if we talk about India's investment in the renewable energy sector to reach 450 gigawatts of installed capacity from renewable energy by the year 2030, we are already we have already established ourselves with 100 gigawatts of installed capacity of energy from renewable sources. So this is the right step in the right direction. Also, we have discussed this statement, so we shall move forward. And these also, so we shall move to our next question. Consider the following statements. Smog towers are structured, designed to work as a large-scale air purifier. China has the world's largest smog tower. And India's first smog tower has been inaugurated in Mumbai. We have to select the correct statement. Smog towers, that means smoke plus fog. This is known as smog. And this is a very big problem in metropolitan cities such as Delhi, Mumbai and many other, many other countries as well. That is why it is being seen in the second statement. Yes, China does have the world's largest smog tower to absorb the smog. So, in cities such as Delhi, when stubble burning becomes a huge problem coupled with the firecrackers of Diwali, this creates a situation of smog persistently for many days. So, we talk about the third statement, it is incorrect. India's first smog tower has been inaugurated in Delhi and not Mumbai. And smog towers, these are structured which are designed to work as large-scale air purifiers. So, the first and the second statement being correct, the third being incorrect. The correct answer to this question is option B. Ahead of its infamous smog season, Delhi recently got a smog tower, a technological aid to help combat air pollution, September, October, November, especially October and November. In October, because of the stubble burning in the farm areas of Punjab, Haryana, West Uttar Pradesh, and even in Delhi NCR region, that occurs a stagnation that helps in the occurrence of stagnation of smoke coupled with foggy mornings and nights. Because the wind speed is very slow and that is why it is, it is of course seen every year that a proper persistent days of smog occurs. And that is why this is a huge technological aid to Delhi region. And smog towers, about them, China has the world's largest smog tower and has reduced particulate matter to 0.5 by 19% in an area of around 6 square kilometer in the towers. Vicinity. We have discussed this statement, so we shall move forward. Consider the following statements. Urban cooperative banks are only partly regulated by RBI and urban cooperative banks have no clear distinction between shareholders and borrowers, which means borrowers can even double up as shareholders. We have to select the correct statement. Cooperative banks, where the members, the shareholders and the customer are the same. These are helpful for people with, with small savings to come together to work as a microfinance institute for themselves. So the second statement is correct. Urban cooperative banks 
are partly partly regulated by RBI and partly by Registrar General of Cooperative Banks. So the first and the second statement, both these are correct. The correct answer to this question is option C, both one and two. Recently, a Reserve Bank appointed committee has suggested a four-tier structure of the urban cooperative banks and said that UCBs could be split into four categories: tier one with deposits up to rupees hundred crore, tier two with deposits between hundred to thousand crore, tier three with deposits between thousand to ten thousand, and tier four with deposits of over ten thousand crore. If you want to know about in depth of this entire concept. You can watch our in news series for today. And now moving on, unlike commercial banks, UCBs are only partly regulated by RBI and their banking operations are regulated by RBI, which lays down their capital adequacy, risk control, lending norms. However, their management and resolution in the case of distress is regulated by the Registrar of Cooperative Societies, either under the state or the central government, depends on the region, region in which they are operational. Also, UCBs have no clear distinction between shareholders and borrowers, which means borrowers can even double up as shareholders. Moving on, consider the following statements. Dravidian languages are spoken in India and Sri Lanka only and Kuruk are the Dravidian speaking scheduled tribe of Andhra Pradesh. Which of the above statements is or are correct? Dravidian languages, group of 70 languages are spoken in Sri Lanka, India and Pakistan. So. In South Asia, we talk about it's not only limited to India and Sri Lanka. First statement becomes incorrect. And the second statement is also incorrect because they reside not in Andhra Pradesh but in the eastern regions of India. So, none of them being correct, the correct answer should be option D, neither one nor two. A new research paper has provided some new insight into the linguistic culture of the Indus Valley civilization. Dravidian languages, a family of some 70 languages, are spoken primarily in South Asia, spoken by more than 215 million people in India, Pakistan and Sri Lanka. There are also a number of Dravidian speaking scheduled tribes such as the Kuruk in Eastern India and Gondi in Central Asia. Kuruk, also spelt Orao, are a Dravidian ethnic group inhabiting the Indian states of Jharkhand, West Bengal, Odisha and Chhattisgarh. Moving on, consider the following statements. In India, AIFs are defined in Regulation 2 Clause 1, Sub Clause B of Securities and Exchange Board of India, Regulation 2012. Anything alternative to traditional forms of investments get categorized as alternative investment. We have to select the incorrect statement. Both these statements are actually correct. So the correct answer is D, neither one nor two. Recently, the Ministry of Finance has launched Ubharte Sitare Alternative Investment Fund to facilitate debt and equity funding to export-oriented MSMEs, that is micro, small and medium enterprises. So micro, small and medium enterprises, if we talk about these, micro enterprises are those, I told you about this yesterday as well, in which investment in plant and machinery is not more than rupees 1 crore and the annual turnover should not be more than rupees 5 crore. Similarly, when it comes to small, investment should not be more than rupees 10 crore and annual turnover should not be more than rupees 50 crore. Again, in medium enterprises, investment should not be more than 50 crore and annual turnover should not be more than 250 crore. So, keep these distinctions in mind. It could be asked in prelims. Also, anything alternative to traditional forms of investment gets categorized as alternative investments and in India, AIFs are defined in Regulation 2, Clause 1, Subclause B of SEBI, Alternative Investments, Fund Regulation 2012. Next question says, with reference to the Jan Shikshan Sansthan scheme, consider the following statements. The scheme aims at imparting vocational training skills at the doorstep of their beneficiaries with a minimum cost and infrastructure. It is implemented through NGOs with 100% grants from the government of India. So, we have to select the correct statement. Both these statements, look at them, they are correct. The correct answer is option C, both 1 and 2. Recently, the Jan Shikshan Sansthan has bought high-speed internet to some of the remotest 
tribal hamlets deep inside the Nilambur jungle in Kerala. The JSSs are imparting vocational skill training programs at the doorstep of the beneficiaries with a minimum cost and infrastructure. Moving on, JSS are unique in the sense that they do not provide only vocational skills but also include an element, an element of life skills which help the beneficiaries in day-to-day -day life. The priority groups are women, scheduled caste and tribes, minorities and other backward sections of the society. We have discussed this statement, so we shall move forward. Consider the following statements with respect to the Chakma and Hajong tribes. These are ethnic people who live in the Chittagong hill tracts and are found in the northeast India, West Bengal and Bangladesh only. Chakmas are predominantly Buddhists, while Hajongs are Hindus. We have to select the incorrect statement. Chakma tribes, yes, they are predominantly Buddhists and Hajongs are Hindus. So the second statement is correct. And these are the ethnic groups living in the Chittagong hill tracts and are found in northeast India, West Bengal, Bangladesh and also Myanmar. Here it is written only. So Myanmar is also there. So the incorrect one is 1. Option A is the correct answer here. Moving on. Chakma organizations have slammed the proposed deportation of 60,000 people belonging to the Chakma and Hajong communities from Arunachal Pradesh. We have discussed this statement, so we shall move forward and the second one as well. They fled erstwhile East Pakistan, which is now Bangladesh, in 1964-65 and came to India and settled in Arunachal Pradesh. Moving on, consider the following statements with respect to Yuktadhara portal. The portal is likely to serve a, as a repository of geotags created under various national, rural and urban development programs and the portal created will facilitate the planning of new Mandrega sets with the use of remote sensing and GIS that is geographic information system based information. We have to select the correct statement. Yukta Dhara means Yukta means Yojana and Dhara means flow. So this portal will keep a track on the flow of the projects which are national in nature and those put into rural areas and not urban areas. So the first statement becomes incorrect because here it is written rural and urban but this portal is for rural areas. First statement is incorrect. The portal created will facilitate the planning of new Mandrega sets. Whatever assets are created under this, under the Mandrega will be tracked with the help of this portal. So the second statement is correct. As we had to select the correct one, the correct answer is option B. Moving on, the government recently launched a new geospatial planning portal, Yukta Dhara. The portal will help in facilitating the new Mandrega assets using remote sensing and geographic information based system. So much transparency. The Yukta Dhara portal by the government was launched by the Minister of Rural Development and Panchayati Raj. The portal is likely to serve as a repository of geotags created under various national rural development programs. Whatever programs apart from Mandrega also, these will be also included in this portal. Then the portal created will facilitate the planning of new Mandrega sets with the use of remote sensing and GIS based information. He gave the famous slogan, one caste, one religion, one God for all, Oru Jati, Oru Matham, Oru Devam, Manushyanu. In 1888, he built a temple dedicated to Lord Shiva at Aruvipuram, which was against the caste-based restrictions of the time. In one temple, he consecrated at Kalavan Kod, he kept mirrors instead of idols. This symbolized his message that the divine was within each individual. The above paragraph refers to which of the following iconic historical figures. This historical figure is actually Sri Narayan Guru. Option D is the correct answer here. And the Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi had paid tributes to Sri Narayan Guru on his Shanti. His family, Sri Narayan Guru's family, belonged to the Esava caste and was considered a Varna according to the social mores of the time. He gave the famous slogan, one caste, one religion, one God for all. Also, in 1888, we have discussed these two statements. We shall move forward. Consider the following statements with regard to Global Manufacturing Risk Index. India has emerged as the second most sought after manufacturing destination across the world. India has surpassed the US as the world's second most desired manufacturing hub 
we have to select the correct statement. Yes, both these statements are correct. The correct answer to this question is option C, both 1 and 2. Now, according to Cushman and Wakefield's 2021 Global Manufacturing Risk Index, India has emerged as the second most sought after manufacturing destinations across the world, surpassing the US as the world's second most desired manufacturing hub. And this is actually because of the reforms to both land and labor laws and the rising focus on India can be attributed to India's operating conditions and cost competitiveness. Moving ahead, consider the following statements with respect to Guru Granth Sahib. The Granth was written in Gurmukhi script and it contains the actual words and verses as uttered by the Sikh Gurus. It is considered the supreme spiritual authority and head of the Sikh religion rather than any living person. We have to select the incorrect statement. So, Guru Granth Sahib, the Granth was written in Gurmukhi script containing the actual verses uttered by the Sikh Gurus. Also, it is considered the supreme spiritual authority and also the head of the Sikh religion rather than any human being. So, we have to select the statements which is or are incorrect. None of them are incorrect. So, the correct answer is option D. Neither one nor two. In scenes that would forever be etched in the hearts and minds of the Sikh community, following Taliban's takeover of Afghanistan, three of the last six saroops of the Holy Scripture, Sri Guru Granth Sahib, were evacuated from the war-torn country on a flight to India. Guru Granth Sahib, also known as Adi Granth, is the scripture of the Sikhs. The Granth was written in Gurmukhi script and it contains the actual words and verses as uttered by the Sikh Gurus, considered the supreme spiritual authority and head of the Sikh religion rather than any living person. Moving on to the practice question, which of the following can be classified as the impacts of heat waves? Less workers' productivity, risk of wildfires, adverse pregnancy and childbirth outcomes, mental health issues. We have to select the correct statement. So, I hope you'll be answering it correctly in the comment segment. That's it for today. Tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment. Until then, stay updated and thank you so much for watching.